everybody, Matt from Eastwood here. There isn't much to building a traditional hot rod. You pick a nice body, your drivetrain, and your suspension, and you're on your way. To me, the stance of a vehicle is equally as important as the wheels and tires that you pick, and the chassis is the foundation that gives a hot rod that iconic profile that we all love. Behind me, I have the chassis table that we built in another video with some tubing on top that will become our frame rails. Follow along as we build a simple hot rod chassis and we show you some tips and tricks along the way. So let's get started. First, the front of each frame rail was marked so that we could slide the original Model A front cross member in place. The original frame horns narrow as they slope down, so we needed to relief cut the front of our frame rails to pinch the height of the rails down to match. With the front of the frame rails modified, we slid the original cross member in place and set the width of the frame at the cow and clamped the rails in place. Next, the front cross member was clamped in place and we checked our cross measurements in the frame rails and set our desired caster. We then welded the cross member in place using the MIG-175. The frame horn sections were then clamped in place and welded to the frame rails. We then marked out lines to make a series of relief cuts in the frame just in front of the front cowl and cut through the frame rails from the top, leaving the bottom side intact. Using a floor jack, we lift it up on the front cross member, compressing the relief cuts and gradually sweeping the front portion of the frame up to our desired angle. Each seam was then prepped and slowly welded shut, letting them cool in between welds. Next, a pie cut was taken out of the bottom of the frame rails just behind the cross member to bring it back to level and we welded the seam shut. All right, so what we've been doing here is sweeping the front of the chassis. This essentially lowers the front end of the vehicle and gives it a nice profile. So we've already put a bunch of relief cuts in the chassis here, lifted it up about five degrees, and then in the front here, what we need to do is compensate for that five degrees to get our alignment of our front axle correct. So we've taken a pie cut out of the chassis here, just behind the front cross member. We're gonna press down on this, which will bring it back down to zero, and it'll be level with the back portion of the chassis. Then we can weld it up, and we're ready to test fit our suspension and start setting our rear ride height.
The frame was then cut free from the table and set on the ground so we could bolt up our front suspension. The VersaCut 60 was used to cut out the original floor from the body so it could be channeled over the frame. With the body set on the frame, we rolled the rear axle under the body and cut notches in the wheel wells so we could set the rear ride height. The engine was temporarily mounted in the frame to load the front suspension so we could take our final measurements. Height measurements were then taken from the floor to the top of the rear cross member and from the top of the frame rails to the top of the cross member to determine the size of the rear frame step. We also measured the distance from the center of the front hub to the center of the back hub to determine our final wheelbase for the car. The chassis was then locked back into the table and a rear fixture was made to hold the rear cross member at the desired height. We then dialed in the wheelbase and used mechanics wire to cross measure and make sure the cross member was straight and aligned in the frame. All right, guys, let's give you a little update on where we're at with the chassis build. In the last couple of shots, you saw where we set the body on, and we test fit the drivetrain to get some weight into the chassis so we could take measurements to figure out exactly how high our rear Z needed to be. So what we've gone ahead and done at this point is we built a rear fixture here that sets the rear cross member exactly at the height that we need it to be. And we've also squared everything up on the chassis table here so that we know that it's straight and true, and it's going to go down the road straight. So now all we need to do is cut up some pieces here to finish off the rear Z, weld everything up, and our perimeter frame's done.
beginning of this video, we started with a pile of old Ford parts and a bunch of box tubing, and now, well, look at it. We got a pretty killer rolling chassis, and it's very strong. All I have to do is dress up a couple of the welds and add a center cross member, and we have a completed rolling chassis. Next, we're gonna build a floor for the body so that it sits down over the chassis and bolts on like factory. If you wanna follow this build or any of our other builds, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit eastwood.com to get the tools you need to do the job right.